right, guys, it's a sad day at the off-grid shed. The batteries here have finally met their end. You can hear the low voltage alarms. And I've been noticing some uh, battery failure since August of 2022. Thankfully, for the Raspberry uh, Pi and the Solar Assistant running, I was able to identify this pretty early. So I'm going to go ahead and start replacing these batteries with um, some new, brand new um, lithium iron phosphate uh, batteries that uh, I picked up online. I'll be doing a video on that shortly. Um, but I uh, saw this coming. I uh, started losing capacity quite a bit on these batteries. And I hooked up my uh, uh, power supply, my bench power supply, hooked it up to each battery and tried charging individually. And the voltage would go from like 24 and a half up to like 26 in like 15 seconds. So I knew there's not much left. So, um, you know, it's an opportunity to uh, put new batteries in. This whole project was a great learning opportunity. And, uh, you know, better things are on the horizon. But uh, definitely, this was a good value at the time buying these used batteries. Wish I could have gotten, you know, another year out of them. But uh, in the end, they served their purpose. And it's time to move on. Just want to mention, I picked up these batteries from EEL. Uh, they ship from California. You have two options. You can ship from California or directly from China. If you go with California, it's a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth the price. They come in less than a week. These are all grade A cells, and they were in fantastic shape. Now, I want to mention that I went with 230 amp hours versus 280 or 305 just because of the price. In reality, the price of the cells are just about all the same per amp hour. It's really a matter of how much you want to spend on your project. If you follow my channel, you probably noticed the video that had some stolen batteries off my front steps by a fake FedEx driver coming up in a stolen truck. So yes, these are the same batteries that were stolen. You can check out that video on my channel as well as hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. I also purchased the JK BMS. I'll leave a link in the description below. This BMS is absolutely fantastic. It's a smart system with Bluetooth. The BMS provides two amps of balancing as well as many adjustable perimeters. Overall, the JK BMS is a great little system to safely operate and manage the new battery system. Just one note, I chose to make my own cables for the BMS and opted not to have the standard ones come with it. The battery tester just went off. And you can see 237 amp hours, just over six kilowatt hours. All right, just want to mention that I didn't run these batteries all the way down to 22.5 volts. I went to 22.8 volts. There's probably three amp hours left in capacity. We're probably looking at between 230 and 240 amp hours in total. Now, the next step was to go ahead and recharge these batteries, get them out of the basement, and bring them over to the off grid shed. All right, so this is it for the BYD batteries. This is the end of life. We're gonna take these out, recycle them, and uh, install the new batteries. So I'll have a top shelf here for my new eight uh, batteries. They're Cat L batteries, 230 amp hour. And then I'll have two additional shelves here for future sets of batteries. Hopefully I'm gonna do one more set around uh, Christmas time or so. And then this spring I'll have another um, set down there. So it's about six kilowatts per shelf, and we'll start off with six kilowatts right there. So I went ahead the other night, just took apart everything. I had balancers, I had BMS, I had all my balance leads running. Um, took that all apart. Um, gonna sell a lot of stuff off, the BMSs and so forth, stuff I can't use anymore. And uh, just get rid of these batteries. It's been a great learning experience. As far as, uh, you know, learning with these, hooking them up, making it work off recycled batteries. But uh, they sort of just lost their life towards the end of summer. And uh, it was time to upgrade, install uh, new batteries. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I have a, a good system here. If you look back there, the off-grid system, it's nice, you know. And uh, now having brand new batteries for that system, it's just going to be great. So I'm going to take these out and we'll hook up the new batteries. You know what? I'm, I probably need to take these terminals because they're going to hit here. And I can short out the whole battery because they're going to touch and conduct here. So let me, let me put some tape on all of this here. How easy that is. Wow.
Here's a look at the battery cabinet all cleaned out with the new Cat L batteries installed. This didn't take too long to set up once I removed the old batteries. I ended up using the existing cabling including adding some Anderson 175 amp hour connectors to match the existing connections. Check out the custom 3D printed BMS stand holder. This accessory is pretty handy and a better option than just leaving the BMS freestanding or taping to the battery pack. I'll leave a copy of the STL file if you have a JK BMS and want to print a stand for it. The next step will be attaching and setting up the RS485 adapter from the BMS to the Raspberry Pi so I can monitor each cell using Solar Assistant. More to come on that in a future video. The batteries are taped together using Kapton tape. I am not compressing the batteries as this in my opinion is not needed. There was a lot of hype in the last year or so about compressing lithium iron phosphate batteries to increase cycle count. I don't think the extra materials and time will make a difference in the long run if I were to try to compress these batteries. Here I have everything buttoned up and ready to go. The system has been working flawless for a week or so since I have installed the batteries. The biggest challenge heading into winter is the lack of sunlight for the off-grid shed. As I mentioned previously, I will be looking to expand and add more batteries. There is enough room in each battery shell for up to 16 cells or 48 total in the cabinet. I'll probably never exceed 24 cells, but it's nice knowing I have extra room for expansion. We recently started to hook up our outdoor Christmas lights, and it has been a total blast knowing that all these lights are running off the new batteries in the off-grid shed. As we look forward to next summer, the solar panels and batteries will continue to power our swimming pool, tools, and shed throughout the season. Alright guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. If this content was helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as it really helps to grow my channel. Take care and have a great day.